Hello stream. Hello YouTube people watching at home. How are you doing? Um, my name is Dagwood 33 and welcome to a brand new day of streaming and of later uploading these to YouTube. Now, it's TNO 1.0.5. Uh, it came out two days ago at the time of recording this, or well, streaming this. Both actually. And, um, yeah, it's just a good old time to go ahead and hop in and prep for it. Now, the new update has added the uh, English content that was supposed to be in the first release, but because of various issues, it couldn't be included. So, hopefully, we should be good to go. We'll start with a 1962 start date, because that's the only start date we have, after all. And we're going to be playing, obviously, as the Kingdom of England, because we got all that nice new content that we got to check out. So, we have Alec Douglas Home, authoritarian democracy of the king, uh, leading the Kingdom of England. Although American aid came to England, it came to the English in the wo World War. It was too late, and for the first time, England was invaded by a foreign power. Her empire stripped away, and with an occupation force ensuring good order and civility of the English people, England now faces its darkest hour with no Arthur to save it. If anything can be said of e the British, however, is that they are hard-headed. And even now, 20 years later, whispers of rebellion spread. The nation now sits on a tipping point. Collaborate with the Wicked Hun, or risk everything to stop them. We will have to go and load in, and then we will just... There we go. So, uh, England clearly is not doing the best right now. Um, uh, Scotland is independent. And they didn't even need a Brexit for it to happen. Wales is around. They lost uh, Northern Ireland. Split between Ulster and just normal Ireland. And the Germans are over here in Cornwall. So it is really not in the best spot right now. But hopefully we'll figure out some way to uh, bring back the old glory in one way or the other. At least on the island. We're probably not going to be able to bring the Empire back. But, you know. There's only so much you can do, so much you can expect. And right now, what we have to do, worry about is just what's in front of us. I've started pretty early, than, earlier than I usually do. I usually start at like 8, 8.30. Right now I'm streaming. It's not even 4 p.m. It's just about. So, uh... It's a little early, but it's a Friday, so I'm expecting some people will be probably able to hop on in a second, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, if you want to load in and prep for it. There we are. Of Englishmen and the rest of the world, what is there to say but that they invaded most of it at one point or another? Perhaps then it is inevitable that they would be subjugated to the same dep uh, depredations they inflicted on a thousand nations at the hands of Germany. England, in this new and untested era, is not the same place as it once was, for instead of the traditional power structures, it is led by a loose alliance of those who want no more war with the Reich, the Royal Party. Under Alec Douglas Home, the party has recovered greatly from the miserable days of the war and the chaos following the 1953 London Uprising by communist revolutionaries. Home leads the moderate faction of ERP, the largest portion of a coalition dedicated more to stability than any true ideals beyond that. At his side is Harold Macmillan and the reformists, who normally adhere to the democratic principles but are willing to compromise with Home for the good of England. Also present are the hardliners, dedicated fascists led by Arthur Kenneth Chesterton, who advocate for a state closer to the German model. Despite their differences, all three of these groups have been willing to work together for the sake of England's recovery. But recovery doesn't mean stability, for another faction exists within England, HMMLR. Her Majesty's most loyal resistance is a network of several different rebel groups, all answering to one unknown man, allegedly called the Boss. The organization itself can be traced back to the aftermath of the Second World War, but it wasn't until the defeat and annihilation of the Communist Party of Great Britain after the Third Battle of Cable Street that HMMLR rose to the fore of the English rebel organization. 
HMMLR proper are dedicated to the return of the person they believe is the rightful monarch of England, Queen Elizabeth II. Somewhat conservative organization, it is surprisingly it is surprising that they are allied with the second largest faction, the Left Resistance, led by Bill Alexander, a veteran of the West Russian War, Spanish Civil War, and a dozen other wars in between. Along with being one of the few notable survivors of Third Cable Street, the Left Resistance are an ex eccentric mix of communists, socialists, and even most of the old Labour Party united under a common banner and cause. The third piece of the puzzle can be found in David Sterling and his commandos, the only rebel group to be active in rebellion from the end of the Second World War, when he deserted, Sterling's commanders are the smallest of the three major parts of HMMLR, but are also the best trained and equipped. What sets them apart from their brethren, however, is their fierce republicanism and unquenchable desire for vengeance upon the traitors to England. These two factions will eventually have to face off, though in what circumstance and when remains to be seen, but the victor will have an opportunity to decide not just the fate of England, but potentially the fate of Britain as well. So for features, we can decide the fate of England through elections and politicking. Reunite the Isles, for better or worse, and play your part in the great game between the Reich and the OFN. And hopefully England will prevail. We'll have to wait and see, though. So an empire long div united must divide. And an empire long divided must unite. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is no more. The horrors of World War II and the German invasion sundering the nation apart. Chief of the nations in former Great Britain still is England. Though once at the head of an empire which spanned the globe, in the modern era England has fallen on hard times. The collaborationist government of the Royal Party, a loose alliance of those unwilling to risk the ire of Germania, governs the, the country in a decidedly undemocratic manner. Nonetheless, under the leadership of Alec Douglas Home, the collaborationists have managed to piece together a functional administration for the first time in years. Yet not all the men of England submit to the German yolk. Her Majesty's most loyal resistance, the HMMLR, are the foremost group in the struggle against fascism. A mix of communists, monarchists, and everything between HMMLR is united almost solely by their mutual antipathy for the collaborationists and all who serve them. But the balance between these two groups is precarious, and who knows what could happen should the international stage move erratically. We'll have to wait and see. In the north, the Republic of Scotland holds out as the last truly democratic nation of the Isles. Formed not by the tre by treaty, but by the rogue Field Marshal Wimberley and John McCormick's Scottish National Party as a last bid to ward off advancing German forces, Scotland is an eccentric mix of exiles, natives, and soldiers that share only their hatred of the Reich and all those who serve her in common. Yet despite existing for nigh on two decades, the Republic is fundamentally unstable Riven by divides between nationalists, unionists, and other parties still, the future of Scotland is dependent on that of England, and whether an independent Scotland is a feature or a blip on the historical, historical radar is yet to be seen. To the west Eng of England lies the nation of Wales. Forced, forcedly separated from England during the course of a treaty of surrender, the Welsh have attempted to rebuild their nation, which hasn't existed in over seven centuries, to varying results. Internally, the Welsh are even more split by the matter of unionism than their Scottish brethren, with parties all over the political spectrum holding a variety of opinions on the matter, the only consistent agreement being that a union at present would be disastrous. A potential issue in the future of Wales, though, might be their, with their primary export. The coal mines of the Welsh primarily export to Germany, after all, and were something to interrupt this, it might prove disastrous for the fledgling Celtic nation. Across the Irish Sea, the Republic of Ireland ekes out a meager existence as the second of Uni Unity Pact's allies in Northern Ireland. Aiding the, er, the Germans in the conquest of Northern Ireland during the course of the Second World War, the Irish have few friends to be found outside the Pact's influence, with the situation growing ever more unstable in Europe, however. The future of the Emerald Isle is a cert uncertain one, and is likely to be impacted heavily by whomever emerges in victorious in Britain. But the Irish people are not known for giving in to inevitable results. One way or another, the English will find out that out firsthand when the time comes. Britain is a land of chaos, a land of unrest, a land of opportunity. Whom shall rise and whom shall fall is left up to those who take power for themselves. And let the winner take all. I just realized I started my stopwatch, not my timer. It's a little silly of me to do, but you know what, we'll go with it. So let's take a look at our starting situation. We are um, authoritarian democracy with a state religion, illegal trade unions, 
close borders. Um, just... Not the best game, but not the worst at the same time. Uh, policies, I should say. Though the work hour is far from the best here. We have public health care, at least that, but no pollution controls. Um, capital punishment. Yeah, it's not doing so well. We have Alec Douglas Home as our head of state. Alexander Douglas Holmes, a home, was not a man born into any true power. He served in the territorial army to no great success, married his wife Elizabeth in a ceremony of little note, and served as a member of parliament with little influence before leaving in 1937 to be the aide of Neville Chamberlain. Though initially serving as Chamberlain's eye in the house after he left the government, Home was caught up with bigger problems. He spent most of 1940-1943 in a full cast for the spinal tuberculosis he had removed. Thus, Home missed much of the bungling of the unity government in the war effort, along with much of the blame, something which proved useful when the Germans invaded. Ohm was present at the signing of the peace treaty that dissolved the United Kingdom by virtue of inheriting his father's lordship in 1942, but held little influence in English affairs for the remainder of the decade. The 1950s hour proved more favorable, with Holm emerging as perhaps the most archetypical representative of the royal establishment, desiring above else to prevent a second invasion. The royal party is de facto an alliance of several groups, and as one PM after another fell to infighting, riots, or German disagreement, Holm simply kept rising first to the leader of the House of Lords, then to foreign ministers under Montbottom. Finally, following the brief leadership of Sears of 1958, Holm was convinced to take the post of Prime Minister. Holm's government has been a relatively stable one compared to his predecessors. He has managed to solidify the royal party and is tolerated, if not exactly liked, by the garrison in Cornwall. Now, however, with the rising influence of HMMLR, Holm faces far more perilous straits. And whether he shall lead his nation into survival or damnation remains to be seen. We'll have to wait and see, indeed. So, moving on. We have, um, for national spirits, we have our own people's hate, which gives us a really nasty hit to our political power. But Douglas' home government has the distinction of being the only government to last more than four years since the end of the war with Germany. Unfortunately, it is not popular with a good many of the people it rules despite this. The exact reasons vary from perceived illegitimacy to discontent with the state of England and even the simple desire to avenge those killed by the Germans or the collaborationist government. This lack of public support limits the government's ability to meaningfully pass legislation as the royal party and its factions rest on a knife's edge of becoming outright despised by an otherwise apathetic population. Fixing this will be a challenge, to say the least. Then we have... Her Majesty's Most Loyal Resistance, which gives us a hit to our uh, recruitment population factor. Again, not nice. Her Majesty's Most Loyal Resistance has been a persistent annoyance for over a decade, observing the communist and rogue military units, which formed the majority of the pre-resistance to government authority pre-London Uprising. Evidence suggests, however, that the organization formed mere moments after our surrender to Germany. In their worrisome ability to stay largely undetected in their machinations limits our own capability to respond. In addition, HMMLR is believed to have a significant number of former high military personnel in its ranks, in addition to regular terrorists, which raises the question of whether they intend more direct action against us someday. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Moving on, we are lying in ruins, which just gives us a horrible boost. Just look at that production efficiency cap, holy shit. The German bombing raids were devastating to our economy, and our severance from America and our former colonies has not helped matters to say nothing of the fact that we no longer hold the British Isles either. There had been signs of recovery before the Germans' own economic collapse in the 50s, but at the present time the English economy is even, in the most generous of terms, dead in the water. This causes a not insignificant amount of unrest amongst the general public, where unemployment is high in and contributes to the volatility of all populace. Should this be fixed, however, it would be a major relief to our government. Will it, though? And then finally, we have Across the Channel, which gives us some experience gain hit, uh, hit to division training time, factory output, dockyard input. We also cannot train, disband, or edit unit templates. 
England is less than 40 kilometers from the German Reich across the English cha Channel. Despite our best efforts, they have maintained the continued necessity of our garrison in Cornwall, keeping a hand ever ready to strike. The English, the treaty signed at the end of the war mandates that we limit not only the size of our military, but its composition too, with a strictly limited number of tanks and aircraft, and a similarly restricted navy in a grotesque parody of the Treaty of Versailles. But whilst the Germans have insisted upon keeping the treaty strictly enforced, there remains a possibility that if the situation in Germania or England were to change, that this could be superseded. But indeed, we'll have to wait. We also have the House of Commons, which we won't be able to see much of, at least on this side. Um, so the uh, majority leader is um, Douglas. We have Eddie, the monarch. Uh, not hate, not liked by many. And then we have the uh, the uh, opposition leader, Herod Macmillan. But again, we will have to wait and see. And then, actually, I'll just hold off on national focuses. Let's get some research going. Finally getting some gameplay stuff going. Support weapons, and then I think probably some uh, research speed. I think that's a move. And we have, we have two field marshals to pick up as of now. We got the famous Bernard Montgomery, which I think will go with him, just for the heck of it. And then generals, we got. Let's go with Michael Carver. Yeah, that works with me. We'll put some guys on the border with Scotland. All right, and we still have some more stuff to do. We'll start some factory building, and our s construction speed is lacking, so let's get some uh, more factories building stuff, see if that helps at all. It does a little bit. When will this be done? Can I see? It was about to pop up for a second. I'll hold off on that, I guess. And then we also can get some guns and stuff going, which I might as well get working on. Get the basic uh, rifles going. Support equipment. Some motorized. Some early artillery. Anything else? Get some helicopters. Why not? Yeah, that works with me. Um, what else are we doing? There's not much else. I guess dockyards. We might as well work on those real quick. Uh, just do convoys for now. We can't really build much anyway, but we might as well get those going. So, tick-tock, tick-tock. The surrender of the United Kingdom at the end of a war, unfortunately, was not enough to keep dissidents quiet in England. Though many attempted conspiracies have been crushed over the years, and it looked like we might finally be past the dark times following the third battle of cable street in recent years a new organization has waged war from the shadows potentially called her majesty's most loyal resistance they are along with left resistance a thorn in our side like none other assassinations falsified anti-government propaganda and even bombings by hmmlr have become increasingly common and things are starting to get out of hand but the king is set to make a speech on the matter soon, which hopefully will help us to turn public opinion to our point of view. We'll get an event at the end of that. We'll be able to get, uh, prepare for uh, some more actions to happen. Okay, it'll be done by March of 40, uh, 63. That's not too bad. Let's get the speed up and going then. We'll put some troops on Scotland's border. You know, just in case we want to try anything. Well, 
Hmm. He'd be English. As long as we want to aid the um, proper English we end up picking, which you'll we'll figure out in about one day. Yeah. Timothy O'Flowery considered himself about as normal as one could be under the circumstances. He left school once he could read and write, followed his dad into being a bobby once he met the age requirements, got to the rank of inspector, and even found a nice lass to settle down with. But the rest of the world? Tim happened to think the rest of the world wasn't so normal after all. The police hadn't changed so much since the Germans invaded. Tim had never gotten the, ch gotten the chance to fight. London surrendered before the Germans reached his Zenith's position, but he'd known more than a few good men who didn't live to see the war's end. In his eyes, it w was n what had come after that had been the worst. The London Uprising, not to mention the constant terrorism, not by Fentians, but by Englishmen against the German tyrants, and Tim had s to stop them. But whatever he thought of the government, they had a point. The rebels winning might well end and the Germans coming back, and for his wife and daughter's sake, he'd do anything to prevent that. Passing Inspector O'Flowery was Griselda Robbins, a young woman wh whom the police would probably put a great amount of effort finding if they knew who she was. Griselda had grown up under the boo. She watched the Germans kill her friends in the London Uprising, and watched her brother beg on the streets because he couldn't earn a living with his leg blown off. No matter what the government promised, the Germans hadn't left which is why she joined HMMLR. It hadn't been easy. Griselda had followed rumors for months before they noticed her, and after she passed a test of loyalty, she'd end up joining the local cell. London might be the home for the traitors, after all, but they were an arrogant bunch who couldn't even notice those moving beneath the feet. Well, the die is cast. And then we're going to be going with the state beneath their feet. Her Majesty's Most Loyal Resistance, a catch-all term for a problem that has eluded solutions for nigh on 20 years. The current government is probably better described as a combination of three. David Sterling and his commandos are the largest rogue military unit in England, which didn't surrender following the war, and the only ones still active in England proper. Bill Alexander and the left resistance are an amalgamation of assorted leftist, partisans, and labor, labor supporters, though they might not be as influential as the CPGB that, exi that perished on 3rd Cable Street. Infuriatingly, however, the original HMMR's leader is unknown. Some smile masters in his shadow, no doubt if he even still lives, but he somehow managed to get almost every major partisan organization in England to answer to him. Despite ideological differences, this organization is a thorn in our side, and we must excise it. So this will enable us to play from the perspective of the resistance and try to sabotage Edward's speech. We'll also um, be able to monitor the extent of the government's territorial control via decisions menu, and we'll get an event going. So we are losing a lot of political power, like an insane amount. That is not nice at all, honestly. We also have civilian austerity, apparently, which is um, hurting our consumer goods factories. But hopefully when that gets figured out, we'll get some more factories to build some more support up there in our um, soon-to-be-future land. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Looks like there's not many people in chat right now, which um, yeah, you can kind of figure, honestly. But... It's just not one of those days, I guess. Griselda was part of one of the only HMMLR cells inside the city of London proper, and probably the only one which wasn't outright underground. At first, she'd been just a regular member, but with those above her being continually killed or driven out by the collabs, she soon found herself the leader of a cell. Most of her days consisted of working as a barmaid in a pub, sympathetic to the cause, listening in on conversations, and keeping an eye out for new recruits. Every now and then, though, her cell would get some real work, smuggling out firearms, explosives, or even important people to sell in other parts of the country. Of course, sometimes the higher-ups wanted her to do something. As far as Griselda knew, she answered to whom other coordinate London proper, but she never saw them and only got marching orders through a dead drop or a coded letter. 
If she were to be honest with herself, Griselda wasn't that fussed on the return of a queen, or whatever the official line was. Griselda wanted revenge against those who had betrayed England, and if HMMLR were the ones offering, who was she to turn them down? She was part of the fight for freedom, and she would die for it if need be. The motivations of people can be as simple as a knife, or as complex as a maze. Indeed. So next we have the gears moving. We'll get some more weapons, some more PP, and the stirrings of a plan. The funny thing about any moving machine is that it keeps moving, even when the operator is no longer there to guide it. Everyone can agree that that statement applies to HMMLR, but with different definitions. Collaboration is government thinks that the organization is like a speeding car with no driver, going aimlessly until it runs out of fuel or veers off the road and comes to a halt. They see the rebellion as a shadow of its former self, huddled in the hills or cowering in the sewers, and a victory for law and order against the forces of anarchy is a matter of when instead of if. The men and women of HMMLR, however, prefer a different analogy. They see themselves as a different machine, one that does not need an operator once activated, one that can safely be left alone until the moment to fulfill its duty at hand. They are a ticking time bomb, and they are counting down to the beginning of His Majesty's speech. Alright then, so we'll get some weapon. I already said that. What am I talking about? So this opens up the resistance menu. We have some neat little pop... Uh, state selectors which shows us exactly the loyalty in all these places a lot of these places are more or less neutral although whether or not they'll stay that way is to be determined um, what else we have some stability more or less in all these places the same and we can't do much with this now, but once we finish up some stuff, we'll be able to. And we also have the relations between HMMLR and the OFN. Naturally, to conduct any serious operation requires weapons. This means rifles, grenades, ammunition, etc. We need to prepare ourselves for a general uprising as well, which will require arming even more people than we do now. One way to get this is through legally questionable means, namely the gun trade. We can get guns through OFN countries using the contacts friendly to us. However, the actual number of our guns that get through is dependent on how stable Northern England is. Once, the, once we openly confront the government, these guns will be issued as infantry equipment to our troops. The higher the state stability is in Newcastle, Lancashire, and Yorkshire, the higher the chances of our guns getting through, and the less will be lost to the government. Each month, relations will possibly degrade by a small amount. Ooh! Captain Teague, thank you for the follow, man. Welcome to the stream. So we have a moderate uh, degradation, slowly, over time. So I think right now, let's reach out to our contacts and just work on that. And then we have the King's Speech. The collaborations government is like a sieve. Nothing stays secret for long, and anything can be bought for a price. In this case, the boss has received information on the traitor king, Edward, is going to be making a speech to calm the nation in this time of uncertainty. How quaint. Well, it's, it just won't do to have our organization be unrepresented at this momentous occasion. Indeed, we ought to send representation of our own to the proceedings. Heavily armed representatives. Of course, this isn't the kind of action that can take place without extensive planning. HMMLR needs to prepare our response to the collaborationist attempts to hide the truth of how they have failed England and its people. With some luck, our message will ring out forever. So we can send out the agents. We can send in agents, uh, send in agents, do anti-government propaganda, or infiltrate the palace. I think the move is to uh, infiltrate the palace and uh, go from there. The gears are moving. It's time to move on. It is too hot right now. God damn. Not me. It's 93 Fahrenheit. God. I am not a fan of this heat wave. I really am not. Well. 
Borman is the successor. Just good old status quo stuff, I guess. We'll see what happens there with the war. And that's more decisions. No one quite knew who the boss actually was. Oh, to be sure, everyone at knew of Mad David Sterling and the Red General Alexander. One had refused to surrender with the rest of the army and had fought on since the end of the war. The other was the most notorious communist to have escaped Cable Street. Some thought the two were the leaders of HMM, ah, HMMLR and the boss was in a smoke stream. A screen. A fiction to keep the traitor's attention elsewhere. Griselda personally thought that unlikely as she looked at the two. In spite of their collegiality, in pointing out key locations on the map of London, all she could think of was that they obviously didn't like each other very much. It was with small things, a way Sterling grimaced when Alexander rebuked the idea of placing dynamite on the bridge on account of casualties. Or how Alexander frowned when Sterling suggested his men would be better suited on, to an open attempt on the king. Griselda was at the meeting because she was the highest ranking cell leader in London, not forced underground. A sobering thought considering she that she wasn't even in her thirties. There'd been plenty who'd came before her and plenty who'd come after, it seemed. And that was when an idea formed in her mind. What if I do it? She interrupted in a small voice. The two HMMLR leaders looked up at her in surprise, but Alexander gestured for her to continue while Sterling looked over with a fresh eye, as if searching for something he'd missed before. I mean, I walk through the square every day for work. The Bobbies know me well enough that they won't think twice about why I'm going so close to the cordon. Griselda stopped and awaited the two's response. In the end, it was Sterling who answered. How familiar are you with grenade throwing? HMMLR has all sorts, including the brave ones. Indeed. Get me phone turned off. I gotta keep an eye on my timer. Alright. Okay. I'll reach out to more politicians right now. And we'll get some big, big love going. Most of HMMLR are moderates by any sense of the word. Men and women who want freedom more than anything more specific. But David Sterling and Bill Alexander have other goals. Sterling wants revenge. He's about the only surviving man still in this country who's never surrendered, and he's lost a lot of friends for that. Bill Alexander wants his revolution, though he's willing to forego that to get the Germans out of Britain for good. He's lost a lot of friends on 3rd Cable Street during the first uprising, but he survived, and he'll have his turn to do the killing. Auchinleck, how, meanwhile, he wants the Trader King's speech to be a proper show, complete with HMMLR as the entertainment. Sterling and Alexander might hate the other's guts, but they've more experience in the guerrilla warfare than the rest of HMMLR combined. Time for them to use it. So we have pretty general stability, uh, pretty uh, middling uh, safety for the King's Speech. So well, that's going to change once we finish up this. Also get some more PP starting soon. Still have the austerity going on right now. Which isn't the best, but... You know what are you going to do? Nice to see that the good guys won. Whoa, whoa. World War II. Eh. Well, who is a good guy, really? When you look, when you look at it, we can send in the agents. Mm. He had no doubt that, the, that right as he was standing over the map of London, the reactionaries would be sending a dozen raids after him in England's north. Such a shame that they didn't realize he was in a basement not a kilometer away from Buckingham Palace itself. Bill Alexander chuckled at the thought, gaining the attention of the man next to him. Sometimes, Bill regretted signing the left resistance up with HMMLR, and any time he had to work personally with David Sterling only made the feeling resurface. 
The man was effective, to be sure. Sterling had kept his commanders alive by sheer unrelenting determination for nearly 20 years. But he was also ruthless and unconcerned with civilian casualties, which made Bill think he was quite possibly mad. Bill had his men smuggle in the grenades in the days before his arrival, and Philby had sent word that the reactionaries still thought Bill was in Manchester. Sterling, in turn, had escorted Bill down to the Trader Central, as the ex-SAS referred to London. The king wouldn't like the welcome they had prepared for him. Sterling was glancing at him to see if a chuckle had meant anything, but Bill just waved him off. The evacuation point is a boat in the Thames, which will take you north, you understand? Finish any unfinished business you have here, because you won't be coming back anytime soon. To her Greta Griselda, the local HMMR cell leader, just nodded, committing the plane to memory. Against his whole expectations, Bill was starting to have a good feeling about the whole exercise. He only wished Claude was handling things in his absence. Let's get the party started. Russia looks perfect. I don't know, it looks like, um, they kind of dropped it and it, it shattered all over the damn place. Almost there. The King's Speech is shaping up to be quite the event. Some might want to break out the champagne and call it a day, but London is practically being isolated in preparation for it. The question on everyone's list, list though, is why? Third cable... Uh, is the Aryan Brotherhood still alive? Um, I'll allow that real quick. Uh, the game just started, so no nothing's really changed. The press, for their part, are busy speculating about and issuing declarations of solidarity, but some speculate as to whether it's necessary to block off all of London and put in the curfews for what is, at best, a theoretical threat. The government, for its part, has decided that they will go ahead with these measures anyway. So we'll go ahead and start that. When I approved that message, it, it added permitted term Aryan, which is weird to see, but... It's this mod. This mod means that you have to talk about some weird shit. So you know, what are you gonna do? Yeah, I'm looking forward to Francis Focus Tree too. I know they're saying the next update is coming in September, and um, it's gonna be one of the first couple countries to get a Focus Tree. I think that's free France and not necessarily the French state, but, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, we're losing all that political power, darn. King Edward VIII listened as a chief of a city of London police outlined his plans for security with some, what, something approaching a dull interest. The King of England didn't really know why the man insisted upon having so many rotations of guards about the location of a speech, but given recent events, Edward was inclined to listen. Chad Charles de Gaulle is still carrying on the fight, I know. Man literally too angry to die. Um, whispers had reached Edward that HMMLR intended to kill him at the speech, something that he had initially refused to believe. Surely no group loyal to his niece would kill the reigning monarch. At the same time, a voice in his head asked, what if they were right? Edward hadn't gone any sleep for days. Wallace had noticed and started fretting, only making the whole affair worse. Edward had resolved not to have her present at the speech. That way, even if something did go wrong, she would not have to be in the line of fire. As for himself, well, as his brother had always been so fond of saying, he had a duty to attend to. Griselda had memorized every guard rotation. Sterling had insisted upon it. Alexander had gone over the evacuation route with her and gotten her to warn her brother and mother ahead of time. Once he'd gotten assurances that they weren't likely to turn traitor, uh, that they weren't likely to turn traitor. The main thing that Griselda had worked on was her throwing skills. Where once she might have had all the skills of some toff fresh out of a bar, she now had at least a basic grasp of distance and the timing needed before she ran. She was ready, and Griselda dearly hoped that this would be enough. The die has been cast in. So we can do some anti-government propaganda. 
Or we can just infiltrate the palace. I think we'll do that. And, uh, do we want to do a gun shipment? Yeah, let's get some guns shipping in. And I'm thinking we'll probably want to do some, uh... And we'll need some stability in northern England. Which I don't think... We, we don't quite have yet. But we'll work on it. On the bright side, we're we are starting to actually get some power. That trailer lives with a second. All the way over in, uh, Canada. We have native rep uh, reservations in poor condition, as well as the unaddressed Quebecois terrorism. Oop, we can do it. The writing is on the walls. Yeah. I think we do it. One need only look at the streets of London to see how ripe the city is for revolution. It's like a bale of hay, only in need of one spark to set the entire house afire. The police are no problem. Those who aren't on our side will be dealt with by the ones who are, if they can't be bribed into staying back, of course. The crowds. That was something Bill's lad solved. Turned out when you know half the unions in the country, you can get a few of them to turn out and act as a... Uh, disruptive influence for a public event like this speech with Sterling's lot acting as civvies to lead, lead them we ought to give the king a right surprise when he turns up for teen biscuits something this entire country will remember forever that is a pretty thick Italy a lot of it is, is you know salt flats land isn't that good but what are you gonna do so our gun shipment was mostly successful. We take what we can get. And we have quite a bit of guns with us now, which is very nice, especially for what's going to be coming up uh, in a second. Good old infantry equipment. As Timothy O'Flaherty sat on the couch with a telly tune to some children's show, he reflected that maybe he should take a day off work more often not every month or even every six, but maybe once a year wouldn't do any harm. His daughters seemed ignorant of the fact that he was watching them instead of their mother and had busied themselves assembling the dollhouse he'd bought them with what he was telling Martha was a uh, special bonus. And truth be told, it was a special bonus. It wasn't every day a man showed up at your door and offered you 500 quid to stay home on a specific day. Tim wouldn't have acted on it except for the fact that he caught several of the younger constables chatting amongst himself on the subject and upon some discreet inquiries had even discovered his boss, the chief inspector, was taking the king's speech off. If everyone was doing it, why not him? He could think of a lot of things he'd rather do than stand about in a line all day and watch the crowd riot. Something that was reinforced as his wife brought the tea tray out and set on the table. Oh yes, no need to go into work today. Family can be its own reward after all. And so... Now we just see the King's Speech. No more preparation. Edward's going live. And then we'll get the ability to contest control of states via the decisions menu. So the uh, foundation has been set. It's time to research some more tech. And prepare for uh, showtime. So chat, how are you guys doing? Is Himmler in the uh, the good guy in this mod? I wouldn't say so. Um, just judging by um, the amount of genocide that's probably going on, I probably wouldn't say as much. I pro I wouldn't say so. In fact, I, I dare say he might be the bad guy. All right, court. Cool. I'll finish this focus. This is actually a good place to stop the video after this. Chilling, just spending the whole day mining Minecraft. I like it. Good old Minecraft. 
This game looks great. It's fun. It is pretty fun. Um, the grenade toss had been almost perfect, landing amongst the people behind the king rather than at the traitor's feet, but the result had been impressive nonetheless. The king had been hustled off unharmed, but his cronies hadn't been so lucky. lucky. Griselda had left London with help from Sterling's men and Alexander's smugglers, and been taken north, deep into the north, to past Yorkshire, at least if she was being any judge. It wasn't until Griselda entered the small house in the middle of nowhere, though, that she had realized what her actions had truly meant. The men with her had talked about taking her to see the boss, and of the five people in the room, it was obvious who it was. It wasn't Bill Alexander standing aside with a beer in hand and chatting with a thin gentleman in a suit. It wasn't Sterling catching the first bit of sleep he'd seen in days. It was a figure almost every English citizen knew. Member of Parliament, Claude Auchinleck, a former general who had been the last British officer holding his position at the time of the surrender to Germany. A living legend in every sense of the word, and evidently the leader of Her Majesty's most loyal resistance. Griselda had given a salute as she entered, but he waved it off and invited her to sit. They talked for a long time about the sacrifices of her civilian life was appreciated, how her family had been evacuated along with the rest of her cell, and about her future career prospects, HMMLR, and need of operatives to ferry communications between these two cells. That couldn't be trusted regular couriers, and according to Auchinleck, she fit the bill perfectly. Death to traitors. Assassination attempt on Edward VIII. The stunning news today, the King of England, Edward VIII, has had a narrow escape from the assassination during a speech he was performing outside the Buckingham Palace. The assassin, believed to be a radical member of the organization HMMLR, attempted to throw a grenade at the monarch in the middle of a speech, and was only stopped by the fact that their device landed amidst members of the government standing from uh, behind the king. Shielding him from its wrath, this is a public representation of the instability many have long believed hides beneath the facade of civility in modern England. Apparently God was fond of a king of this day. Though for how long that'll be, it'll be that'll have to see. I'll cut the recording session for this for now. Thanks for watching at home, guys. If you like this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you want to see me do this stuff live, I have a Twitch. Check it out. I also have a Discord and a Patreon if you want to check those out. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching as always, guys. My name is Mdago333, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.